going to ask you to keep your Bibles handy because you're going to need it here in the next few minutes. You come to church to hear the Bible preached. The singing's good, but that's not the main attraction. God's Word is why we're here. Wasn't it for this? Wouldn't have nothing to sing about. So Romans chapter number 4, I'm going to bring you a very, very unusual, different message for me, uh, but it's a Bible truth, and I want to give it to you this morning. Romans chapter number 4, and if you would please look at verse number uh, 17. Romans chapter 4, verse number 17. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations. That would be God speaking to Abraham. Even before him, before whom he believed, even God, who quickeneth the dead, watch this now, and calleth those things which be not as though they were. That verse has always intrigued me. It, it, it gets hold of me. I'm, it's sort of like, whoa. And that verse says God sometimes will call something there that ain't even there, just like it was there. And then it is there. But call those things which are not there as though they were. And I want to preach this morning on the subject, when faith becomes sight. When faith becomes sight. Don't get nervous. We are not a name it, claim it, crazy church with a bunch of nuts in it who think God is an errand, errand boy or some kind of magician that anything we want, we can just say it and God will do it. We don't believe that. As a matter of fact, uh, most churches and preachers who believe that are about two things, physical prosperity and money. And this church isn't about that at all. Uh, people who always preach about miracles and signs and stuff and money are unbalanced in the Word of God and don't know how to rightly divide it. And they all make the same mistake. They believe we're in this kingdom, in this kingdom, that like we're in the kingdom. Lord, if this is a kingdom, I'd, I'd hate to see a bad time, I mean a good time. Uh, but uh, this, we're in spiritually the kingdom of God, but the king, we're not in the kingdom of heaven right now. Uh, the kingdom of heaven, literal, visible, physical kingdom, Jesus will come and set up one day. Now, you've got to rightly divide it. If you don't have the King James Bible, you don't have rightly divide in it. It's the only Bible that has rightly divided. It'll say something like handling correctly. The Bible, the King James Bible says rightly divided. There are divisions in the Word of God, and that's the only way you can make sense out of it. Now, uh, we sometimes shy away from a truth like this because there's so many crazy people. There's preachers on TV. I heard a preacher on TV talking to money. He was talking to money. He said, I command you money. Come in here and pay these. I said, I wonder if that money can hear him. You don't talk to money. Money don't have ears. Uh, what he was doing, he was trying to subliminally suggest that his people send that money in. That's what he was doing. Mind, mind games and uh, manipulation. Amen. Amen. Might as well just call it what it is. It's, it's a con artist at work. And, uh, uh, and, and we, don't, we don't do that. But, but. The Bible does, I say again, the Bible does teach that there are many times in the Bible and through history where God's people have stepped out by faith and called something and God honored that faith and put it there. It happened. And it still can and does. So I'm going to give you uh, a few of those. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. So when you leave here this morning, your faith ought to be stronger. Uh, faith come by hearing. And I'm going to give you the Word of God, a lot of it, this morning. So it, they're coming by fast, so try to catch them as I spit them out, okay? Right quickly, these Bible stories. You won't take time to turn to them. I hope you read the Bible and know they're there. Number one, this one's in Joshua chapter 3 and verse 13. And I'm titling this story this morning, Stepping into Jordan Before the Waters Parted. Stepping into Jordan before the waters parted. Now, you know the story here. Moses, the leader of God's people, 
had died, passed away. And uh, the Lord had took him on uh, up, up to be with him. And uh, Joshua, the new pastor, had taken over. They was running one million in Sunday school with no bathrooms and no water fountains and no air condition and no bus and no stage and no lights and no musical instruments, nothing. That's a mob of people out there. And they're getting ready to cross over into uh, the promised land. And God told Joshua, he said, here's what I want you to do. Now think, you got all these people here like it, all these people, and there's the River Jordan. It wasn't no little creek. It was the mighty Jordan River. They had women and children, and here's what the preacher told them. He said, God told Joshua, he said, you tell them priests, go down there, and he said, when them priests put their feet in that water, the water is going to part. Now, you know what they had to do? They had to get up that morning, get their instruments, get everybody ready, the mamas, the little children, everybody was gathered down on the river of Jordan, and they said, what are we going to do? And everybody said, well, I, they said we was going to go across it. Well, how are we going to go across it? We don't have no boat. We don't have no uh, ferry to take us over there. We sure don't have airplane. They ain't been invented yet. And they said, we, we ain't got no way to get across that water. What in the world are we going to do? And they said, I don't know, but the preacher said that we're supposed to be down there at uh, such and such at 10 o'clock this morning, and we're going across uh, the waters of Jordan. Now, can you imagine Joshua getting up there and saying, I, I bet he thought like me and you had thought. He said, Lord, I'd really appreciate it if if you just go ahead and open them waters and when I get down there, I'll tell everybody you worked a big miracle and I'll tell them, I'll tell them, Lord, you worked. Lord said, nope. He said, them waters ain't going to part until you put your feet in them. Now imagine this now. Imagine you're imagine going over here to uh, uh, down our Castle Bridge down yonder or that Lake Road Hiss or Hickory or somewhere and saying, and saying just take your whole family down there and say, we're going to cross this one and step your foot in it. And they, the waters did not move. You know what they done? They believed it before it took place and happened. By the way, that's what faith is. Faith ain't believing necessarily that God can. I mean, that's a little bit. Faith is believing he can and will and does. And so they stuck the foot in there and they said, uh, all right. Here goes, Lord. And they put their feet in there. And buddy, about that time, them water, they said, don't you think we need a big fan or something? Don't you think we need to go up there and make a dam and help? I mean, we're supposed to do our part, right? And Joshua said, nope. All you got to do is stand in that water. And when they stepped their foot in that water, ladies and gentlemen, it opened up just as pretty as you please when they went across there, across the River of Jordan. You know what that was? that was stepping into the water before it opened up. Number two, I'll tell you another story. It's called shouting before the walls fell. It's also in Joshua chapter number six, one of the most amazing stories in the entire Bible. How many of you know the story? Joshua fit the battle of Jericho and the walls fell down. You know what they do? Uh, Jericho was shut up and had great big walls. I mean, uh, uh, they, their, pres uh, their president told them that they was going to build a wall around Jericho and the Philistines are going to pay for it. And, uh, and they, they somehow or another got them, them wall built around that, that, that big old city. And man, they got, there, they got that big old wall around there. It was fortified. Nobody could get in. Nobody could get out. They was in there partying. I mean, shooting pool and getting drunk and, and living it up. Nobody can't touch us. Nobody. But God's people was on the outside. And God told Joshua, he said, now Joshua, here's what I want you to do. He said, uh, we ain't got no water to put our feet in this time, Lord. What are we going to do now? And the Lord said, I'll tell you what you do. He said, you get seven priests and you all get ram's horn, get them a horn. And he said, I want all the people to march around that city one time. He said, all right. Are we going to shoot arrows at them? Nope. Are we going to let off some dynamite? Nope. Are we going to try to dig through that? Nope. All I want you to do is march. Would you like me to jump up on a camel's back and see if I can look over and preach to it? Nope. All I want you to do is march. Keep your mouth shut. Don't speak to nobody. March. He said, okay. He wrote it down as his first point. 
March. And the Lord said, do that, preach that same sermon six days in a row. And he preached, the next day, March, next day, March. And somebody tell me on the seventh day, how many times? Seven. So that makes 13 times around that city. I don't know how far that was. I think somebody tried to figure it up. 13 hours. Every morning, honey, what are we going to do today? We're going to go down there and march. Don't you think it's a little weird? No, well, you are, I believe he's God's man, and if he said do it, that's what we're going to do. So they went down there, and here they went the first day. And they probably, somebody probably said, what are you people doing? We're marching. What do you think we're doing? Why? I don't know. Preacher said God told him first march. They walked around, walked around, walked around, walked around, and they feel sort of weird like I feel right now. Some of y'all look at me like, what is he doing right now? You know, uh, I'm, I'm a fool for Christ. What I'm, <laughs> and I'm walking around like this. Just walked. Couldn't talk. Couldn't shout. Couldn't do nothing. Just walked. All right. All right. Uh, uh, that was Sunday. Next day got up. What are we going to do now? March. Here we go again. Now, I know you're hoping. I hope you got that because I'm not going to do this 13 times. I could, but I got other stories to tell you this morning. All right. So they go around the second time. The second time. I have not been drinking my bloodshot because I've been up all night. And, and I went, they went around the second time. Went around, got up Tuesday morning. Here they go again. Uh, Mama. My friends are making fun of me. They're over there at that school. They say, are you one of those weirdos? Why are you people walking around that, that city? That's sort of, that, you're a cult or something. They say, honey, don't you listen to them? God's never lied to us one time. If God said do it, he's got a reason. I don't know what you're facing this morning. I don't know what you're going through today. But I'll tell you how to get out of it. You obey God and do right and you'll come out on top, people. You'll come out on top. Four, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. They said, are we going to do this again, Mom? It's Saturday. I want to watch cartoons. Shut up. We're going to march. Honey, don't you think, honestly, I think the kids, this is a little weird. Don't you think, honey, this is the last day. Oh, he said we was only going to do it seven days. And Joshua said, all right, everybody ready? And they marched around. And they said, okay, we're done. Nope, we ain't done. We're going seven times today. And he said on that last time, when I say shout, you shout your fool head off. I mean, you let it. They said, is the Lord going to knock the walls down? He said, yes, sir, he sure is. And they said, boy, it's going to be easy to shout. We put in all this work. We've, we've walked, marched 13 times. Man, when I see them walls fall, I'm going to shout. And he said, no, uh, uh, that ain't the way it works. You got to shout before the walls fall down. Oh, that's tough, ain't it? Has the Lord ever put you in a place like that where you say, Lord, if you, I'm willing to trust you, Lord, if you'd just show me. I'm willing to trust you, Lord, if you just, you know, put that water in that pool and I'll jump. And the Lord said, jump when there ain't no water. Now, there's so many crazy preachers that abuse truths like that to get money. We shy away from it. But that's a Bible teaching. The Bible does teach that. Not foolishness, faith. There's a difference between foolishness and faith. So the 13th time they come around and the preacher jumped up and said, shout! And some of them said, this is the last time. Woo! Hallelujah! Praise God! Thank you, Jesus! And they went, Bang! with them ram's horn, buddy, and they started shouting, and all of a sudden, about, it didn't just break in half. It fell down flat. And when it did, they run in there and, and took advantage of that city. And brother, they run them over. And now, I, he said, shout, for the Lord hath given you the city. I mean, it hadn't even failed yet. And Joshua said, he's done it. He's given it to you. It's done. It's up. I'm telling you, he called something that wasn't as though it was. And there it went. I'm telling you, that's theology there, brother. Hey, they shot it before the walls fell. Give you another. Making a cake for the preacher before the meal multiplied. First Kings chapter 17 and verse 13, they was having a bad time in Israel. 
drought conditions. Wasn't no food. Elijah the prophet, God's man, went and he went and he told this little old girl, come out there, woman, and she had a son. I don't know where her husband was. Maybe he died in the war. Maybe he run off, went crazy, something. And he, and he, uh, he, she, he was gone, and there's one woman that had a little meal like cornmeal. She's going to make cake cornbread. She said, this is all we got. We're going to eat it, and then me and him is going to starve to death. This will be our last meal together. About that time, preacher shows up. Well, how you doing, sister? I'm fine. How are you, preacher? I, I tell you what, I, things are bad, ain't it? Sure is. And the preacher looked at her, and he said, uh, make me a little cake. She said, preacher, I'd love to. You know I appreciate you. You know I thank you for all you've done for me, but this is all we've got. And I'm going to make it for me and my son, and then we're going to die. Don't get mad at me. I'm just preaching y'all the Bible. And Elijah looked at her and said, make me one first. And God will take care of you. She made it before. Why didn't she say, if she'd have been like us, she'd have said, well, just as soon as God supplies the need, I will. And he looked at her and said, he ain't going to supply the need till you do. As soon as he gives it to me, I will. He ain't going to give it to you till you do. Ain't that the way we are? You put it there, Lord. Well, I'll trust you. That ain't, that ain't real faith. Well, look what happened. Now, I know this sounds awful. This, you say, I cannot believe that preacher. Because there's crazy preachers on TV that put their self first and have private jets and everything else and wake in millions of dollars and people don't, that ain't right. Them bunch of crooks ought to be ashamed of themselves. But you got, I mean, I ain't saying this because I'm a preacher. I'm saying it because it's a Bible. Amen. Understand that. I'm not saying this because I'm, I'm trying to get, I ain't nothing special or nothing like that, but I do believe this. That book teaches if you'll honor God's man and respect God's man, God will take care of you. It does teach that in the Bible. I taught my girls all their life. I said, you better respect God's man. I better never hear you say nothing critical of God's man. You better, not me or any, uh, any preacher, any preacher come here. I said, if you don't like something he says or does, keep your mouth shut. You honor God's man because I, that the Lord said, touch not my anointed. Do my prophets no harm. I know that's Old Testament, but it's a truth that holds through. And I believe it. And she said, all right, preacher. We're going to starve death anyway. I believe God sent you here. So she took that little bit of meal and put it in the oven. Out come big cake of cornbread. Can you imagine her son? Why does he get it? He ain't no better than I is. How come he gets the cornbread? I don't get nothing. She said, I'm obeying God, honey. We're going to starve anyway. I want to be right with God when I die. And Elijah said, okay. He said, I don't need that cornbread. And they're sitting over there watching him. He said, check your barrel there, sister. And she looked, and it had more in it than it had to start. When she went, oh, my goodness, oh, my goodness. And uh, he, she put another cake in and uh, she fed her whole family. She fed the boy. He ate cornbread. They got buttermilk somehow miraculously and, and put it in there. Uh, and, and brother, uh, and they had cornbread and buttermilk and, but, and they had a shout and they fed the whole family. You know why? You know why? Their faith became sight. It should have been like 90% of Christians today should have said, no, sir, I'm not sharing what I've got with nobody. I'm just blah, blah. And that's why we're a bunch of brats that don't never see God do nothing. You want to see God do something sometime? Step out there and trust him a little bit. Let me ask you people something. Is God still on his throne? Yes, he is. I know there's crazy people that take advantage of this truth. And I'm here to tell you this morning, God's still in heaven. He still owns a cattle on a thousand hills and the taters in the hills. And I'm telling you, he, still, he knows how much your light bill is. He knows how much your house payment is. He knows you're having to raise kids. He knows your marriage trouble and he's able to help you with it. Tell another right quick. Good night. Think of these stories. They say faith is to believe what we do not see. And the reward of faith is to see what we have believed. Amen? 
Give me another. The name of this story is Digging Ditches Before the Water Flowed. It's in 2 Kings chapter 3 and verse 16. This preacher, Elisha, come up behind Elijah, the great man Elisha, that wanted a double portion of Elijah's spirit. Hallelujah. And brother, there had been no wind or rain. They was having a drought. And the people said, we ain't got no water. We ain't got no water. If we don't get some water, we're going to die. He said, preacher, will you pray for us some water? He said, Lord, what do you want me to do? He said, tell them to go out and dig a ditch. That's awful insulting, pastor. I've told y'all before, you'd be better off dig a ditch than to lay around the house and won't work. Amen? We got about a fourth of the country supporting the other three-fourths, and I ain't gonna get off on that or I'll get in a bad mood. If you're a healthy man here this morning, you ought to be ashamed of yourself if you don't work. Or woman either. You ought to work. I teach them kids, I say, y'all ought to work. Work ain't never hurt nobody. Good for you. Anyway, I ain't going to get off on that. He said, you're going to go dig a ditch. Dig a ditch? That's for illegal immigrants. They said, no, it ain't. It's for you. You ain't no better than nobody else. Get out there and work. You're sorry, good for nothing. He didn't say that. He might have. That's in the Hebrew. <laughs> hey, man. Now, look here what he said. He said, y'all want some water? Plow, brother. Drop that plow. Get out there. Have you ever dug a ditch? North Carolina's a hard place to dig a ditch and we got rocks and roots and, oh, Lord. I mean, I hate, uh, if you just had dirt, it wouldn't be so bad. But you go that far, bang, I hit something there. So if that ain't a coffin or something, that's a grandpa or somebody, and, and you, then you hit a rock, then you hit a root, then you hit a rock, then you hit a root, and, and you keep coming up. Finally, you get it there, but they dug ditches. And listen to this story. This is a good story. You need to read it. And the ditches, they dug ditches all down through there and all down through there, and they said, this is the dumbest thing I've ever done in my life. It's 100 degrees out here. We ain't got no water, and he's got us out. What ditch? What we need ditches for? It's drying a bone out here. It's drying most of them these churches that I've been in. I mean, this is terrible. This is awful. I hate it. Let's quit. I want to quit. And he said, dig, people. Dig, dig, dig. And you know what it said in verse 15? It said there was a minstrel there. And this minstrel was somebody, uh, it was a musician. And the Bible said, oh, Elijah was, Elisha was sitting there. And that, uh, uh, that, that uh, minstrel went. And strummed on that instrument. The Bible said the hand of the Lord came upon him. The hand of God came on the preacher. When that, why do you think we have music when we first come in here? Because the right kind of music brought, brings in the spirit of the Lord. And God's hand came on Elijah in 2 Kings 3.15 when the instrument was played. I don't think he was playing hip-hop. The hand of God never came on nobody unless it was to kill them when they was listening to hip-hop. The hand of God don't come on you when you got the wrong kind of music. You say, but I like it. Some people like crystal meth. No big deal. I don't care what you like, brother. That jungle beat and rock music and rap, I don't care if it says Jesus a thousand times. If that music don't honor God, the hand of God don't come on you. Amen. Amen. Did you know they done a study? I ain't got time to get off on all this. They done a study years and years ago, and they, they done a study of criminals and the music they listened to, and people, kids who grew up listening to classical music, hardly none of them went to prison. Hardly none. And you know you say that in average church. The average preacher is so dumb they think, well, it don't matter. The kids like it and let's get the beat going and all that. How dumb can you get? God ain't in a million miles of that. I don't care how big a crowd it is. I don't care how many records they sell. Amen? You don't, the hand of God don't come on you when he's, I don't think Elijah got in there and went boom, boom, boom. Boom, boom. The hand of God, are you kidding? The hand of something might have got on him. Make the valley full of ditches. Music controls your mind. If you don't believe it, 
watch a horror movie and cut the sound off where there's no music. It ain't even scary. See, when the music goes on, she's going through the house looking for the knife and for the gun. And all you, you think she's looking for, you know, the, a fork or something to eat with when the music's down. You know, they're just taking a shower, you know, and that music's like, you cut that off, it ain't fit to watch. Don't take a shower. Lord, if I lived in Hollywood, I would never take a shower. Everybody that gets in the shower gets murdered. All of them get murdered in the shower. Thank God we live in North Carolina where you can take a safe shower. You know what that is? The hand of God come on Elisha. So let's do it, boy. He said, make the valley full of ditches. And let me tell you, long story short, water come out of nowhere. I reckon God created it. It don't say a big old rain come. It don't come from over and eat them somewhere. And it said them ditches filled up with water. And all of a sudden, and the enemy was over here. And the sun came up. Watch this. This is how God worked. And the sun came up. And they saw that sun shining on that water. Anybody you've ever been to the ocean, you see when the sun hits that water, it looks red. They thought it was blood. And they thought, They've killed all of our kings. They've killed everybody. Look at the blood running down there. And they took off running. And Israel run, won the battle. You know why? Because they stepped out and did what God commanded them to do. Give you another. The name of this story is Dipping Seven Times in Jordan Before You're Cleansed. Naming the leper in 2 Kings chapter 5 and verse 10. The Bible said he was a great man with his master, but he's a leper. He is honorable, but a leper. He's smart. He's a leper. Educated, but he is a leper. That's a picture of sin. Leprosy in the Bible is a picture of sin. And so he, he, he had leprosy. And there's a little girl there that worked there. And she's from down home and had been taught right. And he had leprosy and everybody thought he was going to die. And she come up one day and she's sweeping the house. And she said, how are you, sir, today? He said, fine. She was sweeping and she... She finally just threw her broom down and she had a track in her, in her little apron thing and she said, would God my Lord were with the prophet that is in Jerusalem for he would recover him of leprosy. He said, what? She said, would God my Lord were with the prophet that is in Jerusalem for he would cover him of his leprosy. He said, what are you talking about, girl? Speak English. And she said, if you go hear my preacher back home, he could help you. And he said, why do I have to go to hear your preacher? She said, because he could help you, I'm telling you. Well, long story short, here goes Naaman, big shot. It'd be like the mayor. It'd be like the governor of North Carolina going down to a country preacher down at the river and all the people, and he's got leprosy disease all over him. And he says, all right, preacher. They say, you can help me. What do you want to do? And you know what the preacher tells him? He didn't say, well, you should start giving some, so many ounces of gold to the temple every month and I'll, I'll see what I can do or I'll promote some of that. We'll get the best music, um, doctors in the world in here to, you know what he told him? He said, go down there and dip in that muddy water seven times and you'll be clean. God, why does the Lord always, why does the Lord always fix it to where you have to just humble yourself? Down? You know what God will do to you? He'll break you down, big boy, one way or another. You may think you're big and tough and you got the whole world by the tail, and you know, but God's got your number and he'll put you down one day. You better just humble yourself. You better just humble yourself. People say, Lord, make me humble. He didn't, you, make, you humble yourself. You know what you better do? You better stay humble. You get too big for your britches, bam. And you know what? He said, you go down there and dip and join. He said, I'm not doing that. What about Farbar and Alabama and all these other rivers? They're clean and I'm going to go dip in them and be clean. They're not just kind of silly anyway. A big shot man like me dipping his head in a muddy river. Jordan, he said, you heard me. Go dip now, you'll be clean. He said, I ain't doing it. He went away in a rage. I'm getting, that's the craziest thing. I ain't never coming back here, hear you. He went away, but he went away a leper. You can turn around and walk out that door this morning and say, I ain't going to believe that. I'll never go back to her. If you want to, but you ain't you're gonna get rid of your sins. You'll still have them with you. And that guy, he still had them on. He said, finally went back and he said, Okay. I, 
I ain't getting no better. My sores are oozing out. I'm dying. I'm willing to try it. Now you're getting somewhere. Now you're getting somewhere. I'll try it, preacher. What do you want me to do? Go down there and get in that water seven times. Here's the big shot governor in this muddy water. He goes up to about right here, and he says, just dip. That's all. Seven ducks in the muddy pond. That's the name of this sermon. So he goes, See bubbles coming up. That's one. And he will. He said, I said, seven. Why do you have to be that gone technical? You take it too literal. He said, God said, seven. You see how you got to do? You got to do exactly word for word. You know why God was so particular back there with that? with that uh, tabernacle and all the details. He wants us to, you, know, you don't just halfway obey him. You don't just parse. You don't just say, well, the Lord said this, but this will work. No, it won't. Exactly. Two. Yeah. Sound like a country singer. That's two. I don't see a bitter difference. Shouldn't I be able to tell the difference by now? Two treatments. Nope. Seven. Three. Four, five, six. He didn't look a bit. I bet he felt so stupid. I mean, his friends are perfect. <laughs> Get this, put this on nose book. This can go by. We can make money off of this. There's a person snapping pictures, sending it to all their friends, uh, Snapchat, uh, uh, all that stupid stuff people do who are into their self. And they said, uh, send it, send it, send it. About that time, seventh time. He's down there underwater, and the devil says, won't you just stay down there and drown, he says. <laughs> you fool, you're going to stand up. And I'm telling you what, when he come up, his flesh looked like one of these little kids here this morning. God cleansed him. And he come up, whoo, hallelujah, went shouting all the way back home. Ain't got time to tell you that whole story. You know what he had to do? Dip before he got clean. See, we'd say, you cleanse me, and I'll dip all day, Lord. I'll dip till I'm tired of dipping. And the Lord said, nope, you don't need to be dipping <laughs> or chewing either. I told you, get down in Jordan. That's in the Greek, in the Hebrew. Number six, tell you another story. Right quick, two stories in five minutes. Letting down the net before the fish were seen. Luke chapter five and verse five. You know what they come to the Lord one time? The Lord come and all these guys out there fishing and the Lord walks up and says, well, you guys catching anything? I said, no. We've toiled all night and this is the best time to catch fish and we ain't caught one stinking fish all night long. And the Lord said, uh, put that net in over here. And you know they said, it ain't gonna do no good. We've been on this side, that side, front, back, through the middle. We've drug the bottom. We ain't no fish in here. Nevertheless, at thy word, what would we want? We'd want to see a bunch of them swarming. Oh, the Lord put fish. Get them. Woo! He honored our faith. No, he said, put your net down. They didn't see one fish. And they put it in that time, and they said, good night, we've caught a rock or something. The piano's down there or something. We, we can't get it up. And they pulled and pulled and pulled. And it said it, they had so many fish in there, it broke the net. They didn't know what to do. You know what they done? They did it before they saw it. Amen. Last, and I'm through. All these stories could be a sermon. Building a big giant ship on dry land before there's one drop of water. Noah, good night. What a story, people. By faith, Noah, warned of God as things not seen of yet, prepared an ark to the saving of his house. The greatest story, one of the greatest stories in the Bible about faith is Noah building a 450-foot boat, three stories high. You could put 10 of this church in there probably. I mean, brother, in that, in that ark and not one drop of water for miles and no way to move it and no heavy equipment, Nothing stepped out just by faith. Faith sees the invisible, believes the incredible, and receives the impossible. This boat was 450 feet long. I ain't got time to tell this whole story, but I wish I did. Imagine telling your wife and boys 
and their wives, all three daughters-in-laws, we're going to get in this boat. Why, Daddy? It's going to rain. What's rain? It's drops of water going to fall out of the sky. It had never happened. That had never happened before. That's why people lived long back then. The earth, you know, had that covering over, and we'll get into that some other time. That's why they lived seven, eight, nine hundred years. And water come up out of the ground, and, and a mist watered the ground. Water's going to fall out of the sky. Daddy, how do you know this? God told me. But, Daddy, are you sure? Are you sure you just think, you just, you want to believe it real bad, and you've talked yourself into it? No. No. God said it. That settles it. And I believe it. And they said, Daddy, this is a little weird. You've got to admit. I mean, you know they're talking about you and putting it in the newspaper and, 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 and Whoopi Goldberg and that old red-headed witch, whoever, what, what's her name? They're talking about you on the, the view. And he said, yeah, they're going to have a view here pretty soon. They better learn how to swim, get them some life jackets or something. And they said, Daddy, honestly, we're going to work. He said, that ain't all. We're going to have a, a zoo in there with us. What? Yep, a zoo. We're starting a zoo in a boat by ourselves. That's right. And every one of them followed that man. No, he must have been some man. It never, now think about that. It had never rained a drop. Never rained one drop. And he stood up and said, he's a preacher, right? It's going to rain. Get in the boat. They laughed at him. They said he's a crazy. That's the same way we are now, y'all. We're saying he's coming, he's coming, he's coming, and the world thinks we're crazy. We'll find out pretty soon who's crazy. He is coming. He called it one I'll tell you a story, and I'm through. By the way, they got in the ark. The flood did come. Noah gave up the whole world, and God gave it all back to him again. Good lesson for you. You try to hog it, you lose it. He save your life, you lose it. Lose your life, you save it. I've, I've never have been a great man of faith. Never have. There's been a few times when I've got my nerve up and I've stepped out, and the Lord's honored it every time. Starting this church, I could tell you a whole story about that. Other stuff in my life where I have literally stepped out when they wasn't nothing under me. And I'm no, I'm don't, don't, I'm not a great. I, 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 I reason stuff out. I look at all the angles. I weigh out the... I'm, I'm a very reasonable... I mean, I think things through. I don't just... I'm not a spur of the moment. Per, I do... You know, I try to use my head. But once in a while, God... Tell, I tell you, um, here a while back, uh, Kelly lost the keys to her car. And she told me, she said, I can't find my keys. I said, well, they've got to be in here somewhere. And I said, find them. And we couldn't find them for two or three weeks. And I said, they're gone. They're gone. They're gone. I said, Sir, she searched that car over, through. Miss B came up. And I, I called a Toyota place. Is that Solara? I called a Toyota place. And I said, I need a key for a car. And they said, well, is it one of them that's got a keyless entry? And, gonna? and they looked it up and they said, Oh, it would be about $400. I said, what? For a key? Oh, I was mad. You know how you men feel when your wife loses a car keys. Gets you in a bad mood, don't it? Or you some of it's the other way around. And I told Miss B, she came up, I said, I'll give you $100 if you'll find them keys. $100. She looked, they turned the house upside down, pulled the couch, the things out of the couch, they search, I said, search. They got in every car, under the seats, all through the car, side, under it, trunk. I mean, and finally, after about two months, I'd miss it. And I said, yeah. I said, please find them keys. I'd done contacted a man with a wrecker to had to tow it to Hickory because you can't move. There's no way to get in. Uh, you can't. It's got a computer, and the computer has to match. The community, ain't that wonderful? Ain't them wonderful things helped us a lot? We don't live in New York. I ain't worried about it getting stolen. Hoppy Tom Holler. But they, they look, and I tell you what I done. One day, I was full of the Holy Ghost <laughs> for a change. I was. I was right. I'm not right many days, but I was right this day. And you know what? Is on Saturday, and I was getting ready to preach. 
with my hand to heaven, people, I got down and I said, God, would you let me find them keys? In Jesus' name, bang! And before the Lord, I stuck my hand way down in there and I felt something. And I pulled it out and there it was. And it searched that car ten times. You say, well, it was all, I don't know if it was or not. But it was there then. And I went, woo! It's like the Lord got, it's like the Lord got in my hand. Now you may not believe that. Same thing happened to me. Uh, I took Chris and Corey uh, to the coast one time when they was just, just me and the, remember when I dropped my keys in the ocean? In the ocean. You drop your keys in the ocean, bless God, you got problems. And I said, Lord, help me. And I put my foot on that key and found it. And I shouted and I cried and I told her when she got home and we, I, had the best, uh, I had the best time ever was. You know what? For a second there, I really believed, Lord, help me find that. Now, this does not mean that you can just go out and say, Lord, do this and Lord, do that. It don't work that way. There's got to be a need. It's got to be for His glory. He's got to put it in your heart. He's the one that gives you the faith to believe it to start with. And there's, you call it like it ain't there. Or like it is there, and when it ain't, and then it ain't, then it ain't no more than it is. <laughs> How's that for your education? But I'm telling you, I don't know what you're facing this morning, but I'd like to encourage you. You just keep on believing. You just keep on believing. Not, don't do crazy stuff. Well, I've tried it, preacher, and I claimed the Lord would send the money to my car, and he didn't do it. That ain't the way it works. He's not a magician working for you. But he is God, and he is our Heavenly Father, and he does care about us. Let's stand by our head for prayer. Every head.